today you join us on the way to the Broadway car show in the Cotswold. So we're just driving down at the moment. We left about quarter past seven, hoping to get to Tonnington Railway Station for around um, 8.40, somewhat along those lines. Uh, we meet up with a group and then we do a drive into the actual event into Broadway uh, with a group of other supercars and then the car goes on show and we have a walk around the event and uh, have a look at cars and chat to people so it should be um should be, quite, should be quite a cool event some really nice cars going so um we'll just see if we can overtake here <laughs> Driving through the villages, Cotswold villages, to get to the destination, um, and uh, should be there in a few minutes. circa 2008 it was designed 2008 2009 I mean, what's not to like about that <laughs> sounds awesome standard stock exhaust I may put a tuned exhaust on it but that's a different story we've because it's been raining we've got the the top up but you can open up a little window at the back and you get that fantastic audio experience from the engine. I mean, it's just incredible. That's why people keep the 458s or sell, well, after they've sold their 458s, that's why they get them back again. That sound and the, the whole visceral experience you get with this car. It's just awesome. Just everything about it. The look, the feel, the experience, the sound. I think this car pretty much was, was made for driving these sorts of roads. Similar roads, I guess, to what they have in Italy. Um, got bumpy road mode on, takes the edge off. Not fully the edge, because these roads are very bumpy, but it is what it is. That's what you get for living in Wiltshire in the countryside. You could do without the rain. You know, I guess if we are going to have part of the Italian side, we'd have the Italian roads, the Italian music from the Italian job at the beginning, good old uh, Matt Monroe, days like these, and uh, the Italian weather as opposed to the UK drizzly weather that we've got at the moment. But you can't have everything as they say. Right, we've just arrived at Tornington Railway Station and it's quite an interesting area. As you can see there's a, there's a classic railway here. You can pro probably hear the old classic railway in the background. It's just um, passed through. You can't say driven through because a, a railway engine doesn't drive through. 
Um, but we're just here in the, in the park, car park here at Tonington Railway Station and near the flag, flag and whistle um, cafe or bistro area, whichever way you want to call it, which in effect is the, the cafe for the railway station. As you can see here, you know, we've got some fantastic cars that have arrived. Here we've got a 911 Turbo S. We've got a Lotus Esprit behind, Lotus Exige here as well. And it's obviously one of the old classic Lotus Esprits from uh, James Bond, Spy Who Loved Me. Obviously this one's black, but the original in Spy Who Loved Me was white. I don't know if it's exactly the same model, but obviously it's the same, uh, if it's the same model variant, but, and uh, to the right of this, I don't quite know what that is, <laughs> but it looks interesting. It's a track car by the look of it. We've got Lamborghini Hurricane Spider here in the classic green color, a Verde Mantis, I think it's called, LP610, it says on the side. Beautiful car, absolutely immaculate condition. Looks brand new. The only thing I didn't like about the Hurricane Spiders was the roof. It's just a pain that they don't fit a, an actual proper hardtop roof. I understand why, but, and the other thing is that they're very constrained for space. We've got a 360 just turning up here, Ferrari 360. Pretty cool. Sounds good. Sounds like it might have uh, a non-standard exhaust on it. If we look around, we've got various Porsches. We've got a Tuscan in the corner as well, grey Tuscan. We've got a, an Audi R8 V10 here, Roadster. It's very nice, sounds stunning, sounds fantastic. So yeah, we're, we're just here at the, at the Tonington Railway Station and we'll be driving out soon in about 10, 15 minutes, going up to the actual main event in Broadway. And we'll try and catch some of the cars as they actually drive out and uh, obviously catch the cars when we're actually at the event. So we'll see you later on at the actual event. in front of that in the yellow and, and blue livery. Beamer behind us, drophead Beamer and a Tuscan somewhere behind as well.
So we're here at Broadway, as you can see, quite a good turnout today. We've had a bit of rain already, so it's, um, it's vastly improved from the, from the weather that we've had earlier on. Um, got my 458 Spider here on show. And we're going to walk you around and show you some of the other cars that have turned up at the event. Many supercars here. We've got Miura, a McLaren F1, Cantash, um, some, some beautiful cars. We've got a yellow Testrosa here that's owned by, owned by Rob Rimmer, who we've just met. And he's a really nice guy. So um, maybe we'll get a chat with Rob as well on the way around. Hello. Um, but let's, Hello. Hello. let's walk around. Let's have a, let's have a look at his yellow Testrosa first of all. So we're here with Rob Rimmer's Testrosa. It's yellow Testrosa. This is very rare. Of the Testrosa models, this is one of four. Only four were actually created in yellow, were made in yellow with the actual in Tremor interior. So this is very, very rare. So here we've got, we've got the flat 12, it's not, a, it's not a, in a V configuration even though it, it might look like it is. And it doesn't sound like the modern cars, but uh, with a good exhaust on it, it sounds pretty good. Robin shows me that this one sounds pretty good, he's got, a, uh, an, aftermarket in, uh, he's got an aftermarket exhaust system on it. So here we've got the Ferrari 488 Pista. So this is in a beautiful tricolour, I'm not sure what the actual name of this colour is, but a beautiful tricolour orange. You can see the different gradients of the color as you look around the car. Of the 488s, the Pista is, is my favorite, but to me personally, I would go for a Speciale. I wouldn't go for a Pista, I'd put that money into a Speciale, but that's just my personal opinion. There's nothing wrong with the Pista, it's, it's a beautiful car. Obviously force-fed, carbon wheels. Again, he's quite brave having the carbon wheels on the car because you curve those, they're into a, a new wheel really. But uh, beautiful to look at, beautiful design. And here on the left-hand side, we have quite a rare Performante Spider as well. In Bianco, not quite sure what, what version of white, but it'll, call, it'll be called Bianco something or other. Gold wheels. Gotta love the Performante tricolor stripes down the side. The only pain in the backside on these again is the, um, is the folding roof. It is automated, but it's, um, it's just not so great being a ragtop in my opinion, but that's just my personal opinion. Beautiful car. And it was one of them that was in the option for me um, as opposed to buying the 458. But I decided on the 458 in the end. And I'm pleased I went for that decision. But there certainly would have been nothing wrong with buying a Performante. It would have been a good buy and, and these are increasing in value. Here we've got a 458 Italia in black. It's a lovely colour, but the trouble with black on a 458, it doesn't really show the curves off properly. It was fantastic on my 993S. Uh, and it does look good on the 458 when you get up close, but from a distance it just doesn't show the curves. Of course the difference between the, the Italia and the Spider is, on the Italia you see the actual display case, so it actually showed the engine through, um, through the rear engine cover. Got a 4.5 litre V8. This seems what you would call a, a classy spec. So not much carbon fibre on here. Carbon fibre tends to make these cars um, a sporty spec. You can see on the interior, you've got the standard specification. You've got a carbon fibre centre console and standard spec, ventilation trim and racing zone. The racing zone is actually carbon fibre, but if, if you have a 458 and you haven't got it with a race, carbon racing zone, then you're seriously affecting the value for the good or bad of it. Stand, same wheels as myself, only they've gone for the standard silver colour. Mine, mine are coloured Argento Nürburgring silver, just to bring it a little bit different and to go back to a classic colour. And behind the 458 Italia, of course, we've got an XJ220. The XJ220 was supposed to be originally a V12, so on paper they were designed to be a V12, but budgets were reduced, so they actually dropped down to a V6. As you can see, the engine just doesn't look anything special at all when you look through the, the display cover. It's just unfortunate. They really buggered the car <laughs> to blunt by uh, dropping it down to a V6. And of course, back you know, not not too many years ago, these were weren't that very high in value. But they've gone through the roof now. Very few of them around. One of them, I think, recently trashed. But um, but yeah, it's nice nice specification. Got to have it in silver as well. Very common for an XJ220 to be in silver. And then moving along, we have my favorite car that was ever made in the whole world this is my dream car and in my opinion the by far the the best car that's actually here at the show it is of course a lamborghini mura s beautiful beautiful car in the beautiful green lime color again i'm not sure what the actual proper name of that color is but it's just absolutely stunning clearly this car has been either has been renovated or has been stored immaculately somewhere i mean it's got to have been renovated it just looks too good 
um, but beautiful specification, the lime paintwork um, with a black Nero interior, absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful car. Irrespective of the fact that it's supposed to turn into a, a wing at 80 miles an hour plus and, and try to um, in, try to induce lift, they are absolutely just a beautiful car. I mean, the, the design of the car, the, the sleekness of the car. I mean, I, I have trouble getting in and out of my 458 Spider, let alone trying to get in and out of a Mura. I'd love to drive one of these if I could ever fit in one. Beautiful car. Just look at the exhaust pipes. I mean, you just do not get a car that's designed like that nowadays. Stunning. These cars are upwards of a million now, closer to two. And here we come around, we've got a Contash. These are going, starting to go crazy in value now as well. Surprisingly comfortable to drive apparently because they didn't go stupid on the actual wheel sizes. You still retain quite a bit of suspension in the actual thickness of the tires. This has got the uh, Crema interior. Again, standard um, or the sought after, very sought after specification, um, red on Crema interior and it's in very good condition, beautiful. What is fascinating is and next to that, well, you've got my second favorite car in the world. You've got the McLaren F1 in the ubiquitous silver color. So this is, again is the color to have a McLaren F1 in. Um, beautiful specification, you've got the roof snorkel, standard design wheels, single, single knockoff um, uh, wheel, wheel locators. And you've got the the grey white, the sort of grey interior, interesting interior colour scheme. Beautiful car, absolutely stunning, crazy to maintain again. Not as bad as the Zonda to maintain, but still crazy to maintain. Of course, very famous for having their engine covers um, coated in, in pure gold to uh, reflect the heat, because um, gold is a very good heat reflectant. And here we have another Phil Island car. 246 Dino, 246 GT Dino, it's actually a GTS. Beautiful car. I'm not sure what this colour is, obviously it's blue, but I'm not too sure of what the actual uh, name of this colour is. First V6 engined, well, first well known V6 engined Ferraris, but they weren't actually Ferrari though, even though this has got the Ferrari badge on the back, as we all know, or should know, they actually were a brand in themselves, Dino. And then the Ferrari dealers that were selling the Dinos alongside the Ferraris actually started putting badges on them to sell them. And then later on, they were badged as Ferraris because um, they were then allowed, they were brought into the fold, into the Ferrari fold. But originally, of course, the Dino brand was created by Enzo Ferrari uh, to honor his son. And it was, it was, complete, it was a completely separate, separate brand to, um, to have the uh, mid-engined uh, V6 V6 engine. To the right of us is the Turbo S and the Hurricane that we've already covered earlier when we're at the at Toddington tr railway station. So we won't, we'll turn left. We may go back to the Hurricane later on, but we'll pick up some of these cars first of all. So here we've got a GT3 RS. You can see it's actually had a paint protection film put on it. So it's actually had this, um, this car's actually got its paint protection applied by being sprayed, which is one of those new technologies that they use nowadays. It's the same sort of film that they apply, but it's used, used from, um, from a spray system. Um, me personally, I would still go with the actual film that you can wrap around the edges. I can understand why they would use film, a lot easier to apply and perceivably a lot easier to get into tricky areas. And of course, you haven't got a situation, you've got to stretch the film over, it just spray it on. But um, I'm unsure about the actual technology in itself and the actual um, protection coverage it provides. But here, this, this car's been, been PPF sprayed with by Litchfield. Here we have two cars that are just waiting in line to catch fire. So we move on to the Aston. All joking aside, it's a 570S, two 570Ss. Oh, actually, this is a 570GT. So it's 570S and the 570GT. And look at this coloured Aston, beautiful coloured, in the, in the British flag, Union Jack. Well, some, certain aspects of the livery is covered, or certain aspects of the car is covered in the, uh, the livery of the Union Jack. Very subtle. And that's the Martin Superleggero. I don't know what the GBOAF stands for. Obviously, it must be a specific numbering scheme used for the Superleggero. 
Um, with regards to Aston Martins, I'm not really, personally, not really into Aston Martins. I like the DBS. So this is a very similar specification to my car when you first look at it. Of course, the wheels are in a different silver. Mine are in Argento Nürburgring silver. And if you look at the interior spec of the car, you can see that this has got more of a classy spec. So it hasn't got much carbon fiber in there on the interior, which perceivably could hamper could hamper resale. You can see there it's got a remote control fob on, in the center console, so clearly it's got an aftermarket exhaust fitted. That remote control fob will, will open and close the valves in different, put it into, will change the configuration of the exhaust system, so it'll in effect open and close the valves to uh, change the sound of the exhaust system. Beautiful cars, but then I am a bit biased. Actually, it's surprising here, if you look at the actual B pillars, they're sprayed black here. They're not carbon fiber, that's very rare. Usually you see them all, nearest dabby, everybody specs that in carbon fiber. Um, so it's quite surprising they haven't done that who originally spec the car. Of course, when you buy these cars nowadays, you're into the situation of buying the car that somebody else has spec'd. I was very fortunate to get the specification that I got with my car. Just the way how the, uh, just the way how it falls. So here we have McLaren 650S. One of the, one of my more favored McLarens, you could say hasn't sprouted in flames yet. The crazy thing about McLaren is you can, if you looked at a two-year-old 720S nowadays, the amount of performance you can get for the money is absolutely astonishing. And here we have Ferrari Portovino. Classy specification, but you wouldn't really load this up with a load of carbon fiber. It's just not the done thing. So it doesn't detract really from the value. Say if you look inside, very classy spec. You've got the, the red interior with the, uh, with the silver exterior paint color and a black roof. Obviously, it's a hard top folding roof. So we've had some varied weather today at Broadway Car Show. Um, it's been raining, um, it's always been warm, but we've had um, some good sunshine as well. It's, it's sort of modicum of sunshine and, and rain really today. Um, and the sun's just sort of coming through the cloud. As we can see here, we've got a 458 Spider. This is where our car's been all day. And it's had a lot of attention, some really positive attention. And it's really good to be able to give back a bit, um, to let some um, youngsters sit in the car. I remember when I was a young lad, it would have been great if I'd had the ability just to sit in these cars and to experience, to smell it, to actually see what it was like and to feel what it was like to be in one of these cars. So it's really good to be able to give back and let people actually have, uh, let their children sit in the car and have a look around inside a supercar and just to see their smiles, which is pretty cool. And also, um, it was really good to get on the, on the tannoy here. I um, had, a, had a chat with, the, with the, one of the organizers, one of the people that was actually giving the commentary of the event and uh, he, wanted to, he wanted me to give some information about the car, so I managed to do a little bit, uh, gave him a talk about the, the 458 Spider, um, some history behind it, and also it gave me the ability to advertise the channel as well. So um, hopefully I gained a few more subscribers across Broadway. So it's been a really good day today. Plenty of people here, um, really good pickup on, on, the, on the amount of people at the event, um, and a lot, lot larger an event than I really thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna close out now. Um, thanks a lot for watching guys. Um, if you like what you've seen then make sure you click the thumbs up and you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content. Plenty more great videos to come, plenty more events to come. We've got Salon Privé coming forward in the future. We're there on the Saturday. Um, so we're there for the actual, I think it's called the actual Concourse Prize Giving. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.